Everybody got a login for the placement test? Then we're going to go in and you're going to pretend to be a student. Now, remember, you won't be able to do it again if you finish it. So you might want to save some of it to show your teacher. You have a lot of emergent students and students who come here who've never been to school or who are bilingual in many different languages. <coughs> so that is going to have to be a call on you if on the second and third grade you still want them to go and get that phonological foundation or you want to bump them up. Well, I think that, you know, um, a lot of the kids that are coming to us in that situation are really in the upper and middle school, upper grade. Oh, middle upper and middle. So I think we're probably okay starting with the letters with kindergarten. Is that what you're saying? Okay, and then we'll just, but you'll have to tell that to Kendra. So we're going to only okay, so, so we're going to do blends for first grade, diagrams for second well, grade. Well, that's what I wanted to see the placement test, so we can make that decision. Yeah. Okay. Now the only good thing is if you get everything right, it'll take you to the blend test and to the diagram test. So, but it's going to take a while to do. So let's play it by ear if you want to finish it, and then I can ask headquarters maybe to give you another link. So, Yes, so when you log out and you got to log in with the other one. This gives you access to all the programs. I want you to see what the explicit can look like. But see how her desk is cleared? She's working in a small group. She has her stand. She has her workbook. Because you don't want to overwhelm the teachers are not, I don't think, ready to do a direct lesson, but they can do parts of it. Did you notice in her, in, on the table, she just had the paper plates yes. and had the rounded, it, that was what she yeah, used that's for the Where it says professional drug development, uh -huh. there's okay. all the steps that we did, and um, well. This is good to show to the teachers when they want to see it in action, they yeah. always yeah. write it. And like because at the end of the day, you want the direct lesson, but you really want them to practice it on the computer. So uh, for your completion certificate, I will look at a minimum of 40 hours on the phonics or clover and 40 hours on the max reading of the students through the year. Okay, now you know they don't have students attached to them. Pardon? They do not have students attached to them. No, no, but they're overseeing. The, 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 what the not your students. students. Yeah. But you, te you teach students, no, right? No, no. We don't assign grades. We teach no. teachers. We teach oh, teachers. Oh, wow. Teachers. But well, we obviously it's working, and it's going to work even better. <laughs> See how she's working the workbook with the visual drill, and she had the sand, and now he's writing it five times. I want you to see that, because um, you're... You'll have to send me a couple finished workbooks at the end of the year for your portfolio of a student. But I, we've given you all the tools. You, I would have them follow the workbook and follow the uh, lesson plan part using the workbook. So let's, you saw that, that she had her cards and her kinesthetic drill right there, so she did it. Is this helpful to see the yes, difference? Yes, 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 very much. On the last column will be sample different lessons. The program will be as strong as whoever's supervising it. Because you're teaching an old dog new tricks. They're used to just saying learn those words. It's a whole different world now. These manuals are like um, the Bible. It really has everything and it'll make more sense. You have videos. You ha it's called Max Scholar in Schools. So every month, this particular um, teacher set goals. How many passages are you gonna? You think you can read? And you can start by the week. Uh, how many? Uh, usually we do it with the passages. And if they need it, there's a certificate of achievement under documents on materials. That you know, our level one students are the ones getting this. Right. It's going to be really interesting when they're making more growth. That's what you. Then are. That's what I was thinking too. Because Lizzie and I have been speaking about.
When they are become the stars of the classroom, and nice our goal. level two and three kids are not making grades. And Joe okay. Peterson can cool. kind of make that comparison for us. And yeah. then that'll yeah. be a yeah. Way yeah. To He's make, gonna yeah. close the so, gap. But they kids. have to use it, and you have to right. somehow motivate them to do it at home. Do bullets and mortar, and then you'll see the other kids are going to want to go on it. Well, the computer will take them back and give them more chances to get it. If they don't get the highlighting right at first, it might take five or right. times. So they can redo it. What's the um, feeling? Because a lot of our classrooms, especially our primary classrooms, do have consistent like parent volunteers. I think so, parent volunteers would be great. Okay, because I was thinking, you know, we can teach them the See, three that's a great training. Mm -hmm. We what can should teach be doing them. Yeah, we teach can teach the parent volunteers because for one month, yeah. somebody's going to have to wor work with them on the software, right. as you saw in the video yesterday. It took them a month, and then they come in, they know where to go. Everybody's directed, as you saw, to a different place. So you have differentiated instruction. A lot, most schools start out like you on K-3, to but then they expand it to the higher grades because most programs in districts don't really have a sequenced, organized way of intervention for kids who need to go back. Log in and look at what the pretest looks like. Uh, there are two choices to start with, the phonics or the um, reading, but let's start with the phonics first, and you'll need your headsets, the students will need their headsets to know, but I believe after five consistent mistakes, it'll stop for the child. But you will get a list of what they know and don't know on the bottom of that individual report. She got them right on the comprehension, so it kept, it'll keep going up. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> if you miss it, it goes down. Yes. I mean, I mean, at what point does it stop? Yeah. Well, not everybody's going to be like you. But the kids Everybody aren't going to go that far. <laughs> the kids <laughs> won't go that far because I mean, when probably, they make it. I was in a coffee shop, but I probably did it for a half hour. But yeah. the kids are not going to go that far. Now remember, it does not have to be done all in one day. For kindergarten, it should not. It will take them back to where they left off. One thing cardinal about all your number ones, they're in a hurry. They're used to rushing through things and marking anything, so we're changing habits. Remember that back to text? And for the phonics, if they don't get, as uh, one of my bright, all of you trainers pointed out, if they rush through it the first time, they're going to see they got to go back again. So, you know, it's grandma's rule throughout the way, you know. You can't manipulate a computer like you can an adult as a child. <laughs> in take out six index cards and a black sharpie and your glue. And go back to your phonics book <laughs> manual and go to page 87. And let's say you have a third grader and you don't want to put them through the phonics book and all of that. You're going to review, review, review your short vowel. So you're going to take your popsicle stick and you can either copy it like this and glue it, but you're going to put your apple on the front. We're going to hope that by third grade they can learn A apple app. If you want, you can do it like that too. But you're just going to draw it for now, so you have it, and then in the manual, there's always, the, and on the software under phonics, you have all the cards. Okay, so we're going to go through second grade rather quickly. What um, Ann and I thought would be best for your certificate of completion, I have to see how you're training, if you understand it, that you video the, te you know, teaching the teachers this or the different parts of the lesson plan, or the placement test, and uh, the software. Rather than going into the classroom and videoing the kids, when you're being trained as a trainer, better to video your training. Right. It's much more realistic and it's much easier for you to do. So how I will monitor will be your training, 
will be um, how the children are getting on it. So I will look at it every month. Because I can only really see physically what the students are doing when I go into your reports. When you train, make sure you have something like this to show the different steps so you learn the distinctions. Okay, and I want you to go to your digraphs. Okay, so on your workbook, and one other thing that I'm going to want to see, and we're not going to take the time, is for you to organize your card pen. So digraphs are two or three letters that make how many sounds? One. 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 So how many taps? One. One. But you touch in the middle the two. Okay. What is good is for them to learn which digraphs come at the beginning of the word, because we're going to do beginning, middle, and ending words now as we get into syllabication, and which come at the end of the word like CK. And that takes us, the QU comes at the <laughs> CK. Uh, and CK and K we, and NK are digraphs, but we also teach them the spelling rules. Digraph PH, phone. And where do you think you'll see these digraphs, boys and girls? That's the phonemic awareness, the beginning or end of the word. CK, check. Where does this come? At the beginning or end of a word? End. And by the way, this is the long sound of K, and it always is CK with a short vowel. So you're going to see how we scaffold the language and why it was important, beginning with PFNTA, that they know that's a short A. TCH, which? How many sounds? One. How many letters? Three. Beginning or end of a word? Yes. Okay. So that is the explicit, systematic, very important that you do this after you get, uh, after you finish your training on your teachers. So the kindergarten, our goal is for them to finish the short vowels. And if we can go higher, we will. Okay? And to and the software, I want kindergarten to really go through all of it by the end of the year. You want them to go through the phonics software. The phonics, I want them to do at least level zero on the next reading and I would like them to start spelling rules and if they know all their short vowels they can go to the closed syllable. You will be building your reading deck today so you will need cards because the reading deck from then on because I don't think you need to buy more cards because we don't do pictures anymore. It would be First of all, by the end of the day we're going to learn this. I would have an A and as an apple, as in safe when it's long because that's the magic E, as an acorn, which is an open syllable, as an Alaska, as in wash, and as in squash. Those are all the A's. So they would be, you'll be making cards as you go along on your clover. You'll be making rule cards and sound cards. Look at 22 on digress. I have all the steps and I have all those steps in the workbook. On the workbook page. That is like that in every one of your books. Here is your visual drill. Here is your different steps for your lesson. Again, when the teacher works with them. She might do one of these. And here are the pages in the workbook. You've got your sight words in the back and the pages of the direct lesson are here and the steps. I've also made suggestions as a trainer on page 36 of how to implement online and offline. Flow chart is on page 42. 42. Remember on blends and on phonics, 
And on digraph, I give you phonemic awareness exercises. On page 49, I have shown you what are the voice sounds and the unvoice. Uh, there's course vocabulary that you might want to teach them. That in blends is 85 and 86. Now, encoding, you might want to write this down, is spelling. Decoding is word recognition. A macround on page 86. I like using them. That's the short U for the short, the long. I want to point out to the teachers what is a non phonetic or a nonsense word, what's a, a decodable word. You want them to know phoneme is a sound, grapheme is a letter. And um, morphemes are the smallest units of language. <laughs> On the blends, go to 49. Mm -hmm. It might help the teachers, you know, always make the schwa sound as short as possible on mm -hmm. some of the sounded ones and never insert a schwa on the ones below. Okay, let's go to digraphs of what you should mark. I, I will look at the offline suggestions on 36, uh, the, pro, the air analysis on 63, and the progress monitor on page 23 again. You have the digraphs and where it goes in the work, in the direct left. So, you know, you can do one day just fluency or one day just spelling. What they put in the note, in the, in the workbook is my portfolio of their work and the teachers and the coaches to look at. So you're monitoring both from the writing part of the brain and from the uh, tactile kinesthetic of the computer. And I really think that's so important for the teachers to know one day this morning who just has to be fluent. I, I don't want them to think they have to go through all nine steps of the lesson at right. one time. You have to really, you know, and if they're, if they're taking kids up individually, that's their small group for the day if they're doing a fluency check or something. We have to give them permission not to think that they have to do all these steps in 30 minutes. Because they're going to say, oh, okay. I don't have time. Right. Now we're going to the Clover book and the Clover manual. Anytime you see words and sounds, as you teach it, you make your card drill. I, uh, for third grade, I really like for them to have their own deck if you have enough cards. Closed syllable. And you're going to write closed syllable on the front. And on the back, you're going to do the rule, and then you're going to give some words. So we're no longer doing pictures, we're doing words. And Clover is an acronym for the six-syllable type. In your workbook, on page two, is it says closed syllable. So a closed syllable is always the short vowel in the syllable, and it's surrounded by one or more consonants. So it could be bandit, where you're surrounded by two consonants, or it could be attic, where you are surrounded by only one consonant in the front. So then I want you to, on the back, to write the rule, and then for this, they get cards. So if you look at your Clover lesson, on the back, you're, on the card, you're going to do what we call an Orton Gillingham coding. So it's on page four, kitten, vowel, consonant, consonant, vowel. And the coding is vowel, consonant, consonant, vowel. First thing I have them do is underline the short vowels and so they underline the vowel so they know if it's short or long. Let's say you had a low third grader, but you wanted him to get into syllables. You can review easy short vowel words and make those cards. 
But then we are doing full avocation in clover, so you always want to go and show them coating Maybe and many words. So you're making like at Maybe least ten, one, ten, one. ten words now for... Oh, on the same card? No, on different cards. You're also giving them words. Mm -hmm. And in your manual on 32 and 33, it'll correlate to the workbook. On the back of the practice ones, do we code it on no, the back just or just word. the word? And then they're going to do it. They're going to do it, they're going to code it, and they're going to syllabicate it. And they're going to have their stand. So if you look at the lesson plan in your manual, maybe you don't all have them on page 44, we're going to start, our lesson would be closed syllables. And um, we would have a review of, let's say if they were doing the EY double vowel, uh, we would maybe review the EE that we did the day before. And then we go into the visual drill with your rule on the front of the card, in the back of the card, and examples of words for them to read and blend. And then the teacher would dictate syllables on the auditory drill rather than sounds. So you might dictate rap and you might dictate mit. Different syllables. Then they have the sound blending with the alpha chips or pounding with the words again in front. And then you have a fluency drill, a spelling drill, a sentence dictation, and reading. We're moving faster now because that's why it's important for you to understand in the teaching of reading that we assume that they have known that and if they don't know how to tap out short A, I, O, and U sounds, then you have to go back. Go to 36, um, because this in Norton Gillingham is called pattern. So again, you have your rule the closed syllable on the top. So we're looking for the patterns between the two vowels that we see, because in the word like open, which we'll find out next, that's a long vowel syllable and a closed syllable or an open. So you identify the vowels on those cards, or you can take a list. Um, they underline the vowel and mark it with a V, and they look at what is the letter next to it, then they can connect the V's in a line if they want, and then they mark what's inside. So they would mark for napkin, consonant, vowel consonant, slash, consonant, vowel consonant. They would clap it out with you. Napkin, you'll see on the software how they do that. And then they would blend it. But you want them to see the syllables, because if they don't learn how to segment syllables, they're going to read it as needle. And the first syllable ends in a consonant, so it's short. The second syllable ends in a consonant, so it's short. And the coding is vowel, consonant, consonant, vowel, or consonant, vowel, consonant. And I'll show you how we teach open and close together, because if it's H-I, the vowel is long, high, and that's an open syllable. But if it's with the P, hip, see that consonant? That makes it short. The most common syllable in the English language is the close. The least common is the double vowel, which we'll get into, but they're the hardest to teach because there's so many of them. So the first card should be like this. Close syllable. Closed syllable always is surrounded by a consonant and the vowel is short and an example is dented. Then she goes to other words where they're going to underline the vowel and mark it short. Then they're going, when she's working with the student, then they're going to go kitten. So and what's on going, the back of that card? Kitten. Nothing, nothing. Not that where you would have to. These are just the words. This is for them. Okay, I'm just looking this at this. This is the rule. Yes. This is yes. the rule. What, I, uh, what, I, what I did was on the second line, I just put the example in the cookie. 
first line of the close syllable definition, example coding, and then the eight words that I came up with. Right. But on the back of this, you could put the coding and the syllabication. And the vowel consonant, consonant vowel. So sound blending, if you can see here, we're going to only finger tap and go back if they need it. That's why I said you can go back and review. But otherwise, sound blending will be like this. Bandit. Bandit. At this point, we want them to be spontaneous readers. If they said band done, then you've got to go back and tap it out and do the syllable with the individual phoneme. But if I'm wanting them to write bandit, maybe I have them make band. Make dit. And maybe we that's good thinking. Like We're going to spend time on this because every syllable will have the same lesson. Right. If you're the teacher, you need to have this out. I need extra cards, which I have. But we have to have the word list. Okay, we have to have the word per minute chart. Then you as a student have to have it labeled auditory drill. Fluency score, spelling drill, sentence drill. We're going to learn the most common syllable in the English language. It's called the closed syllable. And we study it right away because you've just finished short vowels, consonants, blends, and digraphs. So those are all short vowels. And many words have long words with short vowels. So the first thing you have to learn is the rule. A closed syllable always has a short vowel surrounded by one or more consonants, like dentist or attic. So that is an important Rule. Can you tell me what a closed syllable is? A closed syllable is part of a word that is a vowel with a short vowel sound surrounded by one or more consonants, two or more consonants. Right. And the consonant, like in dentist, at the end is like a gate. It just shuts it away. Some teachers have them write out the rule. That's up to you. Okay. Notice I have all my materials ready. Um, I would have, for Clover, I would have these sheets printed out, which is under phonics, because I would attach it to this. When it comes to syllable types, there's a lot more in the workbook, and we don't want to wait, you know, we want you to know by this time to chart it. Or to write it here, and to then put it in the tr uh, into the software. So we are going to do some words. This word is sudden. Can you clap it out? Say the word and then clap it. Sudden. Sudden. Great. How many syllables do you hear? Two. And that's the phonemic awareness part because a lot of children do not understand even when you clap. So now I want you to write it with your pencil on the back. And I want you to underline the vowels. And then are they long or short? Because I would be teaching them at this point to do the macron of the short. And which are the consonants? And now mark the vowel. Oh, you did. Consonant, vowel, consonant, slash. Consonant, vowel, consonant. And this is called coding. So we could put out all the cards. That is why I'm saying you don't have to do everything all in one day. You might need to spend some time on this. So now that is a visual drill. The auditory drill, and it's very important that your teachers, when they do that, they have the paper, um, and I usually do like five, but they should have the paper ready like I did ahead of time, and the date, and we're going to put on top closed syllables. So I am going to give you some words, 
but I'm only giving you part of the word or the syllable. So it's not write the letter that makes the sound at or write the letter that makes uh, the blends that make pull. You're giving them the syllable. So could you write hick as in hiccup? It's on page 12 of your Clover workbook, and remember it's all identified for you on page 23 in your manual. So you have to bring here, at this point of OG, I want the teachers to know how to use the resources and how to do the different parts without every piece in the workbook. Trust me, I have to have every piece in the workbook for your short files blends diagram because they were skipping the steps and it's the foundational knowledge. That part that you learned yesterday is what Torgerson talks about in his research. If they don't get that, they're not gonna read beyond third grade, fourth month. So don't be afraid to go back, but this will tell you in a sense if you have to as well. Write pet as in trumpet. Okay, so I would mark it Okay, 100%, and again, if there's a mistake, we're going to sound tap, and I'm going to put it here so it's my running record. Okay, so if they're able to do the sound blending, then we go to the fluency. So here again, you have your fluency sheet. You can also attach these to lesson plans if you want them to do the three-part lesson or whatever. And again, I would move over here, and I would time her, but we always practice first. And the fluency lists for all the syllable types are on the software, too, for them to practice. Use cooperative learning. I find that when the, of, no matter what the level, a level one, there's a higher level one and a lower level one, and I say, oh, we're going to do medical school teaching today. You're going to help me have Johnny practice. And then Johnny's going to listen and chart you. Sometimes very effective. While they're waiting for the teacher to call them to do the fluency. Okay, and on the computer they can do it as many times as they want, but they should do it at least once. So um, either you copy the sheet, which is in your materials, or you have it... Um, on the computer screen. Okay, so let's pretend we went through and practiced it. Okay. And who's my timer? And I want you to make some mistakes. Ready? Go. Kick up. Inflict. Velvet. Contest. Tennis. Tantrum. Banding. Traffic. Magnet. Contract. Basket. Consult. Public. Plastic, picnic, stop. Okay, so you read it one, two, three, four, five, times one, two, three, four, five, six. So 30, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 40, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 51, two, that's great. So you read 52 words per minute, but you made two mistakes, so you read 50. So can you chart that and fill it up up to 50, please? Notice on the fluency, I do not stop them when they make a mistake. I'm recording it, and now we're going to do the intervention training on it. Wow, you did great for a first time. Always talk to the teachers and be empowered. Because these are kids that have not had a lot of positive reinforcement in the reading. So, I would either have my chips ready, but today we're going to have the salt. So, for bandit, you wrote band-day. So, you added a letter, a long vowel, which we haven't learned yet, which we will. But I want you to... Sound it out. I'll do it first. And it's fan dip. So that's how we do it in the sand. We underline the syllable. Like you underline in the sand, write the letter that makes the sound at and then at. Okay, so now can you 
found out bandit. I have to hear you as you write it. Very good. Bandit. Let's say she was not able to do it. I gotta get my short eye out because she's not blue. Remember, short vowels must be stable or you'll see band-aid. You'll see them add letters because they've never mastered it. So this is very important. We're on the fluency part of the lesson plan. So you would put over there, here's your words, here's your rule. We did the auditory drill, so you would list the ones you're going to dictate. So everybody do that. And for sound blending, we're either putting it on cards, bandit, attic. So you're going to put, you're just going to list the words here. And you know that you're going to make it on cards with the two syllables or three syllables. And if they miss it, you have to what? Tap it out. Okay. Then we get to fluency because she was able to decode and encode, meaning read and write individual syllables. So now we go to the spelling dictation. Notice on fluency, and I have my date, I wrote it here for the student as well. You want the students Part of the empowerment of this program is the students get empowered. You'll see students on fluency that start out with nine words per minute and they're doing six. Now we do the spelling. So I'm basically using those same word lists, so mark that. And they have to say the word and say the syllable as they write it. Okay, so do Cactus. I'm going to spell cactus. Mm -hmm. okay. Say the word. Cactus. Uh huh. So instead of saying cactus. Okay, but my goal would be for them to write cactus. Again, syllable. So let's try another one. Attic. So write at. at tick. You get that, everybody? It's different. Mental. Mental. Men. Say it as you write it. To. To. Ribbon. Rib. Bun. Okay, but always have them say the word so you know they hear the word right. Remember, a lot of our kids have auditory discrimination. Can I ask a question though? A lot of the second syllables that she's saying have the schwa sound in them, and we're talking about short vowels because it's closed. But, but there's always exceptions in the English okay. language. Well, I know. The only I syllable know. that is always the same as the next syllable that we're going right, to Right, but maybe at the beginning, and that's a good point, use words with it. So like One of okay. the things that I can see this being really beneficial for our struggling third graders or higher, too, is that they get intimidated by words that aren't just three letters. Mm -hmm. And so by breaking it and concentrating on the syllable mm -hmm. is manageable. They're not gonna, mm -hmm. they'll be like, oh, I can get this part. So the next step would be what, everybody? Sentence drill. Sentence drill. So I make up my own sentences. Before we go to leave the spelling, um, part of the, of the OG lesson plan. You can do seven, eight, nine, ten of sight words again. It's cumulative, because I guarantee you they are not done and you can use that list to, to really see where they are. And I'm gonna look at the spelling of these words too in a sentence, because as you know, children can do well of spelling words in isolation, and then two weeks later you put it in a sentence and it's like a foreign language. So unfortunately, it's a different part of the brain, so you have to always work it. So we're gonna take our COPS strategy, and I have you, we'll just put a check through it. So let's see if you capitalize, can you capitalize it, so put a check. Uh, does this look like a complete sentence in your organization? Yes. 
Did you do your punctuation at the end? Yes. Did you spell everything correct? Great. So, that's quick number one. So you would do five or three sentences. It's your running record of how they're progressing. And then I would go the next day into max reading because that's your last step. You probably won't get both on the same day. Okay. So I kind of like one day the phonology and one day the comprehension. Go to your workbook. I would go to page 31 and you have a lot of extra work for them to do either with you or independently. Look at 31, 32, 33. If they're working with you, you have to have them what? The word. They have to say the word and then what the word? Pound or clap. Okay? Then you have your sentence drill. Just write it in pencil above your workbook on page 34. So you can dictate the sentence, but you can have them see how they can create a sentence. Then we're working on the segmentation on page 35, where they are uh, drawing a line from row to tape. Always working on that segmentation. By the way, all of this is on the software too. And then they put it in a sentence on page 36. So now I want to go to the consonant LE syllable. Consonant, vowel, consonant. It's usually consonant, vowel, consonant, consonant, vowel. The consonant has to come first. Okay, so let's go to the consonant LE. It is the only one that is stable. It's always at the end and you have them count back three. So everybody put the rule, consonant LE on the front, and then this is the syllable that comes at the end of the word. The only vowel is the silent E. It's a final syllable. And then you're going to make words like GLE, DLE, TLE on your cards with some words. Poor readers always avoid the, the consonant with the LE. So it's important when you dictate here on the lesson plan, you're dictating fiddle. Write what sound says dull and fiddle. So they know DLE or jingle. Write the consonant LE sound you hear at the last syllable and jingle. Sorry, 37 in your uh, Clover manual. So on the top of 37, you're going to make cards that say BLE, CLE, DLE on the front, and you're going to put the word association on the back. So it's different from every syllable. So you give a sample word. You also give them a list of words like they did before. And they're pounding it out or tapping it out if they need to. Do you put the coding underneath it? Not for this. Okay. You put the coding when you have the list of words. Now, why do you think on the back of the definition? A word. It's a consonant plus an LE. So you've got to always have that consonant. So you always count back three. So you can bracket it. But see how the closed syllable has the consonant? So it changes it. So you're going back and always reviewing those syllables. And this exercise can be done as well in a small group. And I like to bracket the consonant element. So we're always looking at that vowel on consonant L.E. 